We will begin with Charlotte Clinton, who represented Highland Park ISD at the Region 10 Secondary Teacher of the Year competition. We had a chance to visit with Charlotte in her classroom last spring and to capture on video what some of her students have to say about this incredible teacher. She taught us a lot of songs to remember the alphabet, the days of the week, the months. I don't know if I remember that one, but, and then there was, oh, we learned all the Spanish-speaking country capitals. Here we go. Mexico, Mexico, Guatemala, Guatemala, Tegucigalpa, Honduras, San Salvador, El Salvador, Managua, Nicaragua, San Jose, Costa Rica, Panama, Panama, oh gosh, what was it? Republica Dominicana. Well, she has some fun games that we play in class, like the fly swatter game and the beach ball game, and that always makes it interesting and fun. She makes it really interactive so that the kids can really like Spanish and be encouraged to keep going with it. Perfecto, pass. Like she'll have us like change tables really often and like play games with each other so you get to learn a lot of new people. Here we go, diez, nueve, ocho, siete, seis, cinco, cuatro, tres. She tries to make her learning really fun and she makes sure that like it's not just, we just fill in notes. Do y'all live in a house or an apartment? The best answer would be it was a totally new language, and so I didn't know what I was getting into, and I didn't know if it would be hard or easy, and she made it really simple. It's kind of like a secret language, kind of, that not a lot of people know. In today's business, you need to know how to communicate with people from around the world, because it's very, like, intellectual. I want to be fluent in Spanish really badly. I think it would be so much fun. I think a lot of times middle schoolers think that People don't understand them, but when you can say, you know, I actually went to this school and walked these halls and sat in these same desks and had some of your same teachers, then it, you kind of have a little bit of credibility and you can relate a little bit more than um, they kind of feel sometimes. She's really patient with kids, so like if they have like a question, she can answer it and make them comfortable with what they're learning. Perfecto, excelente. Person across from you, go for it. She really shows that she wants us to understand the information and she's not just giving us homework to give us homework. And I love her style, like what she wears and her clothes, you know, she's so pretty and I, um, and yeah. So. Hasta luego. Gracias muchachas. Uh, I'm so glad that you won, you really deserved it. Keep on doing what you're doing. You're the best. Congratulations for winning Teacher of the Year, Ms. Clinton. Congratulations on making Teacher of the Year. I think you really deserve it. I'm so glad I was in your class last year and I learned so much. Congratulations, Ms. Clinton. Ms. Clinton, I'm so proud of you. You deserve every second of this award. You're awesome. I'm coming to visit you next year, for sure. Congratulations, Ms. Clinton. You totally deserve this and I'm really proud of you. I'm gonna miss you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> Good morning. It's an incredible and humbling honor to get to represent the amazing teachers that I work with every day. In the past few years of my time at Highland Park Middle School, I have been acutely aware of this profound truth by John Dunn. No man is an island. I get to come to work every day with colleagues who sharpen, encourage, and challenge me. My teaching peers make me want to be a better teacher and student. So I stand before you today as a representative of the whole. I couldn't do my job without the tremendous support of excellent fellow teachers and administrators. It is also a joy to stand before you today as a product of this incredible district. My love for teaching is the fruit of the educators that shepherded a young curly-headed girl all the way from University Park Elementary to Highland Park High School. I continue to be indebted to my teachers from all those years. As I thought through the many different directions I could take today, I found myself overwhelmed with the options. Tell a little something about teaching? That feels like trying to bottle the ocean. 
Teaching is so much bigger, so much harder, so much more rewarding than anything I can put into words. So with two years of experience under my belt and a lifetime of learning ahead, this is my attempt to bottle the ocean thus far. These are a few things I wish someone had told me before I walked through the doors of my first classroom two years ago. Teaching is a performance. Like an actor, you're always on as a teacher. Now, I don't have much experience in the theatrical department. I didn't even make Playbill in the seventh grade. Don't worry, Ms. McCormick, I really don't hold it against you. <laughs> but as a teacher, every eye is on you every day. They see you at your best, they see you at your worst. They can be your biggest fans or your toughest critics. Middle schoolers give candid reviews, whether you want to hear it or not. Even so, there is no role that I would rather play. Teaching middle schoolers is hilarious. When I tell people I teach middle school Spanish, it usually elicits a funny reaction. Really? Wow, you're brave. Or, oh bless you. A small measure of crazy mixed with a determination to love and to educate. Yes, I teach middle school. You will take yourself way too seriously if you don't pause to laugh along the way. Seventh graders are unashamed to tell you exactly what's on their mind. It's amazing and slightly embarrassing how much I know about the pop culture and social scene of seventh graders. They keep you up to date on all the latest trends. Rockets in fashion, trending iPhone, I mean, latest iPhone apps and social media, trending YouTube videos, and all the celebrity gossip. They rarely filter their thoughts and they notice everything. Style, mannerisms, preferences, tendencies, a new shirt or haircut, everything. One time, a few of my students performed their best impersonation of me, and oh my heavens, what a scary good impression it was. <laughs> it's impossible to hide. One Saturday afternoon, I had gone on a run and then made my routine stop by JD's Chippery in Snyder Plaza. Naturally, I was in my running attire, shorts, tank top, and all. As luck would have it, and of course, this happens frequently, I ran into one of my students. I walked through the door to hear a surprised and ecstatic, oh my gosh, Senorita Clinton, hi. She looked me up and down, dumbfounded that I was wearing something other than school clothes. Almost like she was shocked that I owned anything else. For all I can assume, she thought I slept under my desk. Yes, I do own running shorts. And yes, I like JD's too. Sometimes it's hard for them to believe that you're both their teacher and an actual person. <laughs> Teaching is about preparing them for life. Kids are kids, and sometimes they will act accordingly, but they are also deep wells with stories that have molded and shaped them into who they are. Just like you and me, they long to be known and understood. They need to know that you're cheering for them, that they always have someone in their corner. As teachers, we are given the responsibility of preparing these kids for the world to succeed not only academically, but also as citizens and as people. It is our joy to guide them in discovering their own strengths and talents and to instill in them a desire to serve and contribute to this world in their own unique way. Sometimes the best teaching happens outside the classroom. My job calls me to teach Spanish, but sometimes the most significant moments of, hey, I'm here for you and I care about you, happen when you go out of your way and step into their worlds, at games, meets, concerts, and performances. I remember one afternoon we were cheering for students as they boarded the bus headed for a math competition. Later on, I asked one of my students how it went. He reported that he and his team had done well and then sheepishly added, Senor de Clinton, I saw you cheering for us, and I mean, that was really nice of y'all to yell and cheer, but you might not want to do that again. I felt kind of embarrassed for you. <laughs> Jump at any opportunity to celebrate. 
There will always be work to accomplish, deadlines to meet, and emails in the inbox, but we should never pass up an opportunity to celebrate. In middle school, stickers still work as motivation and affirmation, songs and games are still fun, and dressing up for spirit days or costume days is still entertaining for them and for me. So celebrate. Embrace the chances to be silly and human with your kids. Celebrate successes and improvements, personal and collective, wins big and small, in school and in life. Life and influence happens one by one. When you've got a full day of kids and classes, sometimes it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the numbers. But the moment our students become student ID numbers, rather than hearts with faces and stories, is the moment that we've missed the point. One evening, I made the trek down to Deep Ellum. One of my students was playing in his rock band, something I knew he was really passionate about outside of school. And receiving a personal invitation to his show was a tiny ray of hope that I might finally be getting through to this tough cookie kid. I slipped in the back and watched in amazement as my young, often withdrawn student commanded the stage. I watched him in his element. In that moment, it was just about one, not hundreds. The look on his face when he saw me in the audience affirmed my theory. Most of the time, the world changes one by one. In my two years of teaching, I've done more learning than I could have ever imagined. I've learned that teaching isn't about the numbers. It isn't always about test scores and grades, though those are certainly our charge and goal. Teaching begins with a willingness to be taught yourself. I never imagined I could learn so much in humor and surprisingly profound wisdom from my funny gaggle of seventh graders. Teaching changes you if you allow it to. It's certainly changing me. It's a privilege to serve and a high calling to remain. It's about laughing and learning that whether I realize it or not, I am the decisive element in my classroom each day. As teachers, we have the unique privilege to influence and inspire the future, to invest in the unseen. It's humbling and exciting. It keeps us grounded and focused, dependent and determined. In the moments we are tempted to be overwhelmed by the numbers and the weightiness of shaping young lives, we must remember that day by day, one by one, each student we touch truly matters. Thank you and blessings to each of you as we begin this new school year together.